Wear dark blue with silver and white numbering. And they will run across your screen right to left. Excuse me, left to right. And Notre Dame will go the opposite way. Ball's in the air, tip off is done and St. Paul has the early possession. St. Paul swings it down low to the corner. Gets it to the key, one bounce, the shot off the rim, no good. Loose ball picked up by St. Paul's number 33, Sarah Baring, who you mentioned, is going to play the game physically. And you see early, down low in the key, how well and how down and dirty she'll go to get that ball. And the three officials here tonight, seasoned referees, Mark Thompson, Aslan Backus, and Joe Zarota, they'll gauge how physical this game can be. So the ball swings back up top to number 23, Gajmarak. That's Mandy Gajmarak. She goes to the number four. As you hear the fans chant the Let's Go Irish chant just 40 seconds into this game. Score 0-0. Zero, zero. Ball swings back up top to number 12. That's Frasca. Frasca down low. And Notre Dame just using good patience and smart ball handling skills to control the offense. The pass intended for number four of Notre Dame goes off the leg of St. Paul, and they'll settle down. Second consecutive gold medal game for St. Paul. Last weekend in the St. Catherine Standard Tournament, they competed against Sir Winston Churchill. Came out on the losing end there. They started off the game really quick in St. Catharines last week. Here they fall behind early against Notre Dame at the Welland Girls Tribune Tournament. So St. Paul back the other way, trying to match the threes. That shot up, and now it's a jump ball called as in there for St. Paul was Megan McLeod trying to rip it out of the arms, but it will get a jump ball possession in favor of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Notre Dame up in front of their bench, running left to right across your screen. Send it down low. Here's Frasca. Up top, controlling is number 21. That's Miranda Smith, dishes off. Back down low to number 12, Frasca. Frasca with the three, and it's good. 6-0 Notre Dame, just two minutes in. Both these teams advanced to this game with easy wins. I wouldn't say easy wins, but they won by quite a bit in every single game except yesterday. St. Paul played Javanio, and they only won by four points, 45-41. It could have went either way. Well, this game so far, very back and forth with opportunities coming from both teams. Notre Dame, though, have the only six points of this game, both coming from three-pointers down low in that far left corner. Just so you know how strong these teams are, in this tournament, they're putting up numbers like 70, 60, high 40s in points. So they're, they're two of the stronger teams, and that's why they're here on the gold medal game. So the shot put up off the rim, and it's controlled by McLeod, a turnover. Sees Notre Dame back the other way. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Good layup opportunity, and it goes to count. And number 44 for the Fighting Irish, that's Samantha Morningstar. She'll go to the line for one. Good effort there from Morningstar to really drive and get that bucket as she was fouled. And that's our first foul of the contest. Samantha Morningstar here, one of the players being considered for possible MVP of the tournament. Well, she hits the point and a substitution coming. Nine nothing early lead for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Just two minutes, 40 seconds in the opening quarter. Baseline throw in for the Patriots. Nice give and go play. Here's number 24 now. That's Valerie Pegnata. Turnover. And Morningstar dishes off, and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish up down the floor. Ball swings up top. Quick jump shot, the release off the rim. Rebound controlled in the key. And a well-decided call by the bench of St. Paul to call a timeout and just relax three minutes in the game. So some of the players to watch for in this game that are being considered for all-star candidates for the tournament for St. Paul, it's number 15, Megan McLeod. Number 33, Sarah Baring. And number 22, Laura Dempsey. For Notre Dame, the players to watch are Maddie Gojmarak, Miranda Smith, and Lauren Frasca. Uh, number 15, Kendra Legere, also uh, an impact player for the Fighting Irish. So both teams have a lot of players 
uh, with a lot of skill that the committee have been watching closely. And these players, sure, they want to win the tournament. It's all about team. But the individual awards are nice icing on the cake. Well, it's interesting to note as the teams make their back make their way back onto the court after that timeout, how much of a home game this is for Notre Dame, even though it's technically not a home game. Fans are really showing their support for Notre Dame as it's just a two-minute drive from the campus of Notre Dame Collegiate here in Welland. St. Paul with the ball. The long jumper three is short, and it's easily controlled by number 12. That's Frasca. Frasca finds the streaking Notre Dame player, and it's good for their fourth consecutive three. 12-0. This is not what St. Paul needs early in this game. And it's a 12-point lead fast. So St. Paul unable to connect on offense so far. And Notre Dame just takes it over half. Three and a half minutes in, and they're already up 12 points. Notre Dame's shooting is outstanding. Lauren Frasca here with the shot. And that's one of the only, only few misses we've seen so far halfway through the opening quarter. That jumper doesn't work. The head coach of Notre Dame just running along the sidelines there. That's Barbatano trying to control the defense. So it'll be a throw in for St. Paul. Different styles of coaching for sure. With Notre Dame, uh, loud, boisterous. With St. Paul, more of a, a subtle approach. So both these teams come into tonight's game with only five subs on the bench, each carrying 10 girl rosters here tonight. As the foul is assessed to Notre Dame. Two fouls, the one foul, the count in favor of St. Paul, who only has the one. Here is the St. Paul offense now. That's McLeod, number 15, who dished off, and she's in the key. Nice shooting lane, picked up the rebound by McLeod, and she's fouled, and number 15, Megan McLeod, will go to the line for two. Well, hopefully they can put points on, on the board here because if they don't, it's going to be discouraging. It would have been nice for them to get that layup inside, uh, but here's a consolation. Maybe get to the free throw and get some points here. So the shot off the rim and bounces out. Subs will come in. Entering the game for Notre Dame is one sub. Here's the second shot, and that one will sink. So there's the first point of the ball game for the St. Paul Patriots. Good look up the floor. A bounce pass, but a good defensive block, and it's off the Notre Dame player and will be St. Paul ball. St. Paul in blue from Niagara Falls and Notre Dame in green from Welland, this being the Welland Girls Tribune Basketball Tournament, 12th annual. So 3.35 to go. Fans starting to chant defense now for Notre Dame as Megan McLeod gets inside again and makes it a nine point game and shuts the lead down just a wee bit. Notre Dame, the pressuring St. Paul defense trying to stop them. 23 on the layup, the shot off the rim and it's controlled by McLeod. Good effort for McLeod to play both sides of the floor. We've seen her put in a few points and here she comes back the other way and that one just misses. Both these teams playing much faster paced games than we saw in the consolation final. No one wants to sit back. Notre Dame going to the net hard and a good block from McLeod who's just been all over that floor. Makes the game so much more exciting when two teams play at a fast pace like these two. And a timeout called after that three pointer from Valerie Pegnata. So just like that, they cut the lead in half, six unanswered points for St. Paul, and all of a sudden we have a ball game. And you know what? They got their six points in about two minutes' time because it was four and a half minutes when I called that 12 nothing lead. Now it's two minutes, 41 seconds left. So St. Paul's not laying back. They're giving it right back to Notre Dame. I'm going to take this opportunity, Spencer, to thank you for some of the sponsors. We have AP Brown Jewelers, Pam Swick, Jan Jack, Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation, the Welland Tribune, Ron Harpwood Trophies, Thurston Machine Company Limited, Kojiko Cable, Welland Minor Basketball, Port Colburn Youth Basketball, Brock University, Sandy Foran, the convener of the tournament, Ron McPherson, the PA announcer, Pat Lang, 
Jackie Turner, Peter Vandenberg, and the students of Niagara College Broadcasting Department. And thank you to the host sites, Eastdale Centennial, E.L. Crosley, Vanier, Niagara College, Notre Dame, and Port High. And what a fantastic tournament it's been. We're coming to a close with the final game of the final day. And that, of course, is the gold medal game. 12-6 the score. I'm Spencer Tangway alongside Steve Camus to call tonight's broadcast for you. There's St. Paul going to the net hard. Notre Dame coming up with the rebound. That was Brannigan who dished off. Into the corner. Three is up, just short. And St. Paul controls. As we mentioned, shooting is going to be key for these teams. In the earlier contest, if you didn't see it, three-pointers were a struggle for most of these teams. But in this game, the threes have been draining like crazy. So it's all about getting your shots and getting good shots on. Jenna Greco, number five for St. Paul. She only stands five foot five. I love the way she plays. She's aggressive, she's quick, she's a good shooter. So that was Kendra Lager who put one in there for Notre Dame to make it a 14-8 ball game, and it will be Notre Dame ball as St. Paul's throw and attempt just does not connect. So as we take a little piece of debris off the floor, Notre Dame will throw it in on the baseline with 1.39 to play. And what we can say, a sold out crowd as fans start to pile in here on the second deck of Eastdale Secondary. Good play from the baseline. And to put it home was 21, Miranda Smith. Notre Dame regained that lead of eight points now. 16-8 the score. And here is St. Paul on offense. A good seal coming from number five. That's Jenna Greco, Greco as you just mentioned. McLeod trying to find an open lane. The shot. Nothing but mesh. And now it's a 16-10 game approaching the last minute of the first quarter. Ball sent down to Legger. Up top is number 23, Maddie Gajmarak. Off the rim, doesn't go. Loose ball corralled by number 22 of St. Paul, Lauren Dempsey. Cross-court pass. Down low to the near corner. One fake. Tried to get the easy layup. Finds her own rebound, though, and she can't put it home. Notre Dame back the other way in what has been a very fast pace first quarter. Lots of action on both sides of the floor coming on both teams. As, wow, another long three goes for Notre Dame. And at this rate, we could see 80 points or more for Notre Dame as they already have 19 with 20 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Defense chance galore here from the fans of Notre Dame as we are 10 seconds away from the horn of the first quarter. The shot off the rim doesn't go. And Notre Dame one last push up the floor. Looks off the hands and they'll stop the clock with 2.1 to go. Well, earlier tonight, Spencer, you asked me, what's the key to winning these games? And I said that the teams need to, need to get inside, that they shouldn't really be attempting too many three-pointers. But that's not happening in this game. These girls can shoot the ball. And not only that, as we hear the horn sound of the first period and we look at the scoreboard, 19 to 10, 29 points combined, which is an astonishing number for high school basketball. How much do you think in momentum is playing a role and how much the emotions that these girls have inside that they just want to play the game and they're trying these long shots, trying the shots just because they're excited to be here and they feel they can make it so they try the feeling and it looks like it's been working so far. What I like that I'm seeing here is that Notre Dame has that nine point lead and they're making good shots. But St. Paul's not discouraged. St. Paul has been coming back hard and they've been scoring points themselves. They just need a little more, I don't, I don't want to say luck on their side, but they just need a little more baskets to make the game tighter. They've not lost any confidence because they're coming back at Notre Dame hard. Notre Dame's just sinking their shots. Well, Notre Dame, I tried to count. I believe I had them for four for seven from the three-point line in that opening quarter, which is absolutely great numbers if you're Vince Barbatan, the head coach of Notre Dame. So a nine-point lead for the Fighting Irish, and it will start Notre Dame ball. Notre Dame did come out of the gate quick, but getting away from that, 
other than coming out of the gate quick, the game's been pretty even the last four minutes of the game. So I apologize, we're actually starting St. Paul ball as it's only the second quarter, not the half. So here is St. Paul trying to get it inside. As they stepped out of bounds, it'll be Notre Dame ball. The referee and our officials, of course, standing so close to the court with not much room. It's hard to judge when you're out of bounds as a player. So here comes Notre Dame. Balls up top with 23, Gajmarak. Gets it back. Gajmarak, good move on the layup. The shot off the glass. Nice kiss of glass there before he making the easy layup, and they're up by 11. Smart decision there by Gajmarak just to take it herself and use the glass for the layup. St. Paul picks it up in the key, and the basket's good. Good control from St. Paul's 15. That's Megan McLeod who made the bucket and will go for one at the line. Well, we're understanding real quick why both these teams have so many players that the committee's looking at for all-star candidates in the tournament because there's a lot of really good offensive players on both teams. So the extra point from the charity line is no good. Notre Dame goes the other way, swings it across to the far corner where they've been red hot from the three points. Shot from underneath the basket doesn't work. And back comes St. Paul. With it is number 24, Valerie Pagnata, who also made a three of her own. In the opening quarter, McLeod, excuse me, Baring has it now. And she dishes off to the far side. Di Dominico gives it to McLeod, who can't find Baring. And it'll be a Notre Dame ball. That combination of Baring and McLeod, they've been so well on chemistry and so well they've been working together. You see the pick and rolls work and McLeod was almost wide open in the, new in the, in the key, excuse me, and to I find it. And I don't know them well, Spencer, but off court, they seem to be friends off court. And I think when you're friends off court, that helps out in your trust and the chemistry that's developed in the game where they pass the ball off to each other very nicely. So St. Paul has the ball here, and they'll just dish back to Pegnata, 24, who leads the offense, who calls a play. Pegnata dishes off, that's Baring. The shot, up doesn't work. Rebound controlled by Notre Dame. Nice fast break by Notre Dame. It's off a foot of the St. Paul player, but a good effort from St. Paul's number 13, Grace Di Dominico to keep it in. That's a poor effort from that St. Paul offense and back comes Notre Dame. I almost feel as if St. Paul is now trying to do a little too much instead of thinking it's a marathon, instead of thinking it's a marathon, they're trying to think it's a sprint and do too much all at once. And it's gonna be tough to keep up this pace all game long. Notre Dame coming in again, trying for another easy layup, misses the glass. Up they go again, and they're fouled, and the basket's good, and the Notre Dame crowd goes crazy here at Eastdale Secondary. Great effort from Notre Dame to just take that and go hard up to the net. Well, I'm impressed at how, the, just the pace of both teams. Um, if St. Paul does try to slow it down, it may hurt them because they're down by 13 points right now. Um, but in saying that, if they keep up this pace, are they going to tire out? Right. Pavakwa's one shot at the line, doesn't work, off the back rim, and goes to the St. Paul player. As Vince Barbatano's defense as playing a full court press now as they settle into the defensive roles. And listen to the chance defense from their classmates. 5.15 to go in the second quarter. Here's 33, Baring tried, rebound found by McLeod and she just puts it in for an easy two. Here's Bavacqua, she looks up the floor, she finds number 12 in Notre Dame, Frasca. Frasca to the corner from the red hot corner, that one doesn't go. And as we cross the five minute mark, 25-14 your score. St. Paul swings it to the far side in front of the Notre Dame bench. Back in that corner, they try to get it up. 
Good pressure from that defense in Notre Dame, keeping them to the outside. They tried to come in the middle, it doesn't work, and now it's a two on one for Notre Dame. Bavakwa finds number 21. No shot, and she's called for traveling. Big momentum swing there for St. Paul as it took the crowd out of it for Notre Dame as they thought 21 for the Notre Dame putting Irish Miranda Smith deserved to go to the line, but instead she's called for traveling. St. Paul McLeod tried to dribble in. Referee says that block got all ball and no contact and it's jump ball, so we'll head Notre Dame possession. Well, I'm sure there's people here in the stands without any vested interest in the game and just came out to see a good basketball game. And in saying that, I'm sure right now they're cheering for St. Paul to close the gap as we have an 11 point lead, Notre Dame 25, St. Paul 14. Long three from 23 and it's good. Give it to her, that's Maddie Dajmarak from downtown. Holy, you wanna talk about a shooting team tonight? Notre Dame has been putting on the clinic from the three point line. Here's St. Paul, trying to get back into it. They go to the far side, back up top. The shot off the glass and the rim doesn't work. Loose ball, first two it is Notre Dame, but the referee said he stepped out of bounds. So she just caught an edge of the line, the official says, and St. Paul takes over. It's gonna be tough to beat Notre Dame. They are shooting very well. And as a coach for St. Paul, you gotta look at that and say, what can we do? We could play the best defense we want, but they're scoring from Toronto. You can only keep them out so far. So as the clock says 3.23 to go here at Eastdale Secondary, St. Paul now has possession. Back step, dribble to the three point line and it's good, but the referee only says two. She caught an edge of the line. Bavakwa, number four, using her speed. Oh, what an absolute. Nice finesse move. Ball comes up top to number 21. That's Miranda Smith. Smith has it, looking for help. There's 15 in the low corner. Up top, 23. That's Gajmarak. Gajmarak to the hoop. Too much power off the glass. Found it as Smith, though. Jumper can't work, and it's controlled by St. Paul. Great effort from Notre Dame to get inside and get those offensive rebounds. Just a Unlucky break there for the Irish as they couldn't put one of them home. Good second effort there from St. Paul's 33, Sarah Baring to go to the hoop, and she puts it in. Now all of a sudden it's a 10 point game. Gosh, Marac, the player with the ball now. She's fabulous, she moves the ball well. She can move it up court or she can pass it off to her forwards. She has no problem with any part of the game. Pavacqua almost with a Strip for the ball of St. Paul, but the Patriots able to clear. 33 takes a quick shot. 33, of course, for St. Paul. One of their better players, Sarah Baring, who is slow to get up from the floor, and we have a foul coming. Last two shots that Sarah Baring has taken for St. Paul. Not enough air, not enough arc. She's got to get it up a little higher. So it's possession for Notre Dame, a throw-in in the backcourt. Bavakwa coming up over the line and settling up on offense. I notice a lot of offense in Notre Dame is set by some seals and picks in the, the open areas in the key. And when they're doing it, they're creating open lanes. And as we just saw, an open lane was created on the outside for an easy lane to the hoop. St. Paul has a turnover and now it's Notre Dame with Bavakwa looking up the floor. They go all the way down to the corner. In for the easy two point, but it doesn't work as Notre Dame's number 12, Lauren Frasca, got pushed from behind and will head to the th two point line. The foul line, excuse me. Lauren Frasca, accurate shooter. She had a nice three pointer earlier in the game. The first one just a little short and you can hear everybody trying to get everyone to be quiet and show support for the Notre Dame shooter. 
32-18 the score. I, we're, I think we're going to see both teams use their bench quite a bit because of the pace of the game. Well, Frasca goes 0 for 2 and has to get back on defense. We're approaching the last minute to play until halftime, but we'll have a few ceremonies to get to. The three from St. Paul's number 24 is no good. That was Valerie Pegnata. And back come Notre Dame with one minute to go in the second quarter. They swing it to the near side. Good bounce pass back up top. There's the seal from number three. That's Kayla Brannigan. Look at this offensive set from Notre Dame, and they're called for traveling. But they so well they move the ball. They're so nice with the ball, and they just control and set up. They're great at killing the clock, and with a lead of 14 points right now, that can be key heading down into the second half. It's tough in high school basketball playing without a shot clock when you, when you are trailing in the game because the team ahead can slow the game right down and keep possession of the ball. And it's, it's good to note that all these players and most of the schools are good enough to play with the shot clock. And if you add the shot clock, it makes the game so much faster as teams aren't able to do that slow down. Well, and there's talk of next year. Right now they're using uh, FIBA rules, I believe it is, and next year it's Federation. Okay. And there's talk about shot clocks coming into high school basketball. Personally, I think that'd be a great addition, is if they want to play college ball, they have to get used to the shot clock. And it, there's no, not a better time, even if they put it in senior basketball, not a better time to learn it and get used to how much different the game is when you are pressuring with shot clock. St. Paul's number 15, that was Megan McLeod going up for the basket, but she gets fouled. So McLeod heads to the charity line for two. These are two pretty big free throws that she needs to make to get this team back in this game. One of them's good. And as we mentioned, rule changes in college ball, when they use the federation rules, you can only change before or after both shots. You can't change in between. So there's a sub coming in between here as we use FIBA rules in high school. And 15, Megan McLeod is two for two from the line. 10 seconds on the clock. They go back down to the red hot corner from Notre Dame. With it is 21. The shot's up, and it's good once again. Miranda Smith makes it a 15-point lead. And St. Paul heads to the room, down. Sponsor of this tournament. Bern Frank's been with the Welland Tribune for 18 years. Been the sports editor since 2001. It's his 27th basketball tournament he's covered for the Tribune. 15 boys and 12 girls. Yeah, Byrne has definitely been around for a long time, and he's been involved in the community in numerous amount of sporting events and covers so many sports teams. And Byrne actually inducted into the Hall of Fame in Niagara College for covering the Knights. And he has just been one of the class acts that have helped this tournament, along with the committee, of course, doing a great job again this year. 37-20 now as Notre Dame opened the scoring here in the third quarter. Long shot from St. Paul and it connects as they get one of their first threes of the game. Notre Dame now back the other way. Quick jumper, counter attack coming from number 23. That's Matty Gajmarak. A couple of uh, people who are not on the committee but are here in attendance and they're helping out with committee members here during the gold medal game and even earlier in the consolation game are Pat Lang and Grant Varley, and they're longtime members of the NDBRA, which is the National uh, Niagara District Basketball Referees Association. Long shot once again for Garage Marak. Up, just goes off the rim. Had all the crowd on their feet trying to cheer for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Back come the other way quick is St. Paul. Here's Sarah Baring. Baring dishes off, and now it's number 13. That's Grace DiDominico. Back to Bering. Bering down low. She finds number five, the short Jenna Greco. Greco, one of the smallest players we've seen tonight in both games, but is very nifty in the offensive end. Bering 
trying to find some ground, uses her size, cuts to the middle. Quick jump back, shot doesn't work off the rim. And it'll just go out of bounds, but it'll stay the Patriots ball. I'm wondering how much is it wearing on St. Paul? They played four games last weekend, high level standard tournament, four games this weekend in the Welland Girls Tribune tournament. Um, the level of pace a little different than playing league play. I'm wondering, is, is that wearing on St. Paul? Well, as you mentioned, in playing back-to-back -back tournaments, of course, they have to be getting tired as they've missed the schoolwork, of course, as Notre Dame does what they do best tonight and hit another three and make it a 42-23 lead and spread the deficit to 19. St. Paul trying to do everything they can. Here they come now on the near side. Here's number 22. That's Lauren Dempsey. Up for tournament MVP for St. Paul. But jump ball is called and we get a foul reported to the timer's desk. Something we noticed in this game, of course, is last game we saw, I believe it was Eel Crosley who had 10 fouls in the one half. In this quarter, five minutes to go, we've only seen the one foul as Notre Dame puts up the three. Rebound picked up from number 44 and put home. That's Samantha Morningstar. To echo what you're saying there, Spencer, for the pace of game, it's relatively been a clean game. It's not, some, some games are like street ball, right? This is not like that at all. Well, they're trying to win it for their schools, of course. And as it's been back and forth scoring so far, Notre Dame is just matching every St. Paul basket, which is making it nearly impossible for the Patriots to climb back. The leads right now is 17. Here's Notre Dame with the ball right in front of their bench and head coach Vince Barbatano. Ball swings up top. They go back down low. They've been hot from the corners of the three. Morningstar gets slapped and she'll go to the line. Morningstar, one of the bigger players, and she's really big, and she seems that much bigger when she's in the key, able to jump up and draw the foul. First shot from Morningstar doesn't work. Shot, rebound picked up by Notre Dame. Right back to the hoop and it's good. That's number 15, that's Kendra Lager. The fast pace intensity of these Notre Dame Fighting Irish ladies have been absolutely firing on all cylinders and here they come again. The Lady Irish making it a 48 to 27 lead. And St. Paul will be getting to show their frustrations as they really need this timeout to cool down as there's still lots of basketball to be played. At the conclusion of this game, along with the awards that go out to the teams for winning the game and being the finalists, uh, will also be the all-star candidates, the all-star teams, the MVPs. So it'll be interesting to see who comes out as the all-star team candidates. Well, as we take another look at how well Notre Dame has been doing, they're easily just taking it from St. Paul, as we see. That was Bavacqua going up. It's just been as if St. Paul can't climb back. Notre Dame keeps putting it down their throat. St. Paul could hit three threes in a row. It almost seems as if Notre Dame would hit four 20 seconds later. So it's one of those days for St. Paul where they've been doing everything they can, but it's been all Notre Dame. And the crowd is definitely going against, it seems, St. Paul, as all the students from Notre Dame are here, repping their gold and green. We're back underway, but a foul is coming this time. The steal's not going to work, and it'll be St. Paul ball. As an official, it's got to be fun to play in an atmosphere like this, even though you don't want in a, like a gold medal championship game, the referee's just trying to call the game and not be the game, but it has to be fun for them to be here as well. That long shot coming from St. Paul's number 22, Lauren Dempsey is an air ball and just falls short. Lauren Frasca with the throw in. It's Gajmarak 
bring it, bringing it up the court. Here is Notre Dame now, setting up on offense. Bavacqua to the hoop, off the glass. That one just doesn't work. Two or three players from each team going after, and a foul on the reach-in is coming a block. Personal coming against Notre Dame's number 12. That's Lauren Frasca. And Frasca, as you mentioned, one of those players up for tournament MVP, of course. What a tournament Notre Dame has had to get all the way here. That was a big collision. Oh, absolutely. If you take a look right here, she goes in for the ball, but her body gets more of that. Instead, it's a personal foul against Frasca. 325 left on the score clock in the third quarter. Posting up is Baring. Baring done everything she can. A great effort, but back comes Notre Dame. Here's Notre Dame up top. They swing it down low. That's Fabiano. Back up top, 23 Gajmarak. She's been the hot shooter. Gajmarak to Fabiano. Back up to Gajmrak. There's the jump shot. Looks good. Just misses off the rim. Ball bounces into the corner. And it'll stay Notre Dame ball. How much does Notre Dame have to use the clock now and not worry about maybe putting up 60, 70 points, but playing defense in case St. Paul gets hot? I agree with you, Spencer, but I don't think they need to worry too much. All they really need to do is is control, control possession, don't let St. Paul intercept any passes, so don't make any high-risk passes. So a sub's coming in now for Notre Dame as we see a few players taking a break for the Fighting Irish. Ball swings down low. Great ball movement from Notre Dame, but that pass isn't going to work. Picked off, though, by number 23, Maddie Gajmarak, and they'll regroup up top. Gajmarak to the middle. Quick jump shot by number 15, and it's good. That's Kendra Lager, 50-27. And another timeout for St. Paul. Coach Kristen McDonald probably realizing that St. Paul has her hands full in this game and I don't I don't know what she's thinking if she's thinking you know what let's just make it respectable but to be down 50 to 27 it's going to be tough to come back in this one. Well as we just saw Le Lager hitting that shot it almost seems as if that net is two times as big as St. Paul's tonight because Notre Dame has been absolutely red hot and as a coach Kristen McDonald has to just say you know what we, we may have lost this game, even though it's the third quarter. We cannot give up and make it a 70 to 27 loss. You have to keep playing. And they've been doing just that. They've been trying as hard as they can. Teams do hate it when they lose a game big because friends, family, people will ask on Monday when you get back to school, so did you win, did you lose? Oh, we lost. Well, what was the score? Well, that's that dreaded next question yeah. you don't really want to answer. But nothing against St. Paul here. It's all the credit towards Notre Dame's offense as they put up 50 and we're only in the third quarter. Back comes the Notre Dame fighting Irish. Gajmarak down low. Gajmarak, nifty little dribble, goes back down low to the corner. Gets it back, and she's running the offense. The Notre Dame offense seems to be running through Gajmarak a lot tonight. And that's 23 in yellow on the far side of your screen. Back to Gajmarak up top now. Notre Dame doing a fine job of controlling this game as there's no shot clock to work against, of course. Ball's in the middle. Lager couldn't find it. Two players are sprawling forward, and the official calls for jump ball. Possession is staying, going with, excuse me, St. Paul. As I said earlier, Notre Dame didn't have a close game all tournament. First game, 70 to 31 over Secord. Second game, 47 34 over Ridley. And the third game, 46 33 over Eden. So they've been in command at every single game they've played, and it looks like this is happening here again. Well, Notre Dame doing a fine job controlling the floor. They get back 
And they go, go to work on offense again. Gaj Mrak cuts to the middle. And now here's Brannigan, number three. Brannigan finds Lager on the far side. The pass slips through her hands. And number 32, Di Dominico collects for St. Paul. Patriots dish off to the corner. Goes to the net hard, and she draws the foul. So number 22, that's Lauren Dempsey, will go to the line for the Patriots. I was just looking at the tournament schedule, and we were talking earlier in the, in the consolation game, Spencer, about how great of a host site Eastdale is. And um, they continue to use this facility for their tournaments and Eastdale wasn't even in this tournament. I don't even, I'm not even sure, but I'm not even, I don't even think Eastdale has a girls team maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure they don't have basketball. I'm positive that if they do, they don't play schools like Dennis Morris, Notre Dame, Lakeshore. They would play the Port Highs and the E.L. Crosleys. But I'm, I think I want to side on you with this one and say they don't have basketball. They're just using a facility and Eastdale's proud to be a part of it. As back come the Patriots now with 36 seconds on the clock, they go to the net hard and they draw another foul. So the Patriots will go to the charity line once again. This time it's Megan McLeod who will shoot two. So these are two big points now as we're in the dying seconds, 34.2 to go in the third. McLeod for two. And she puts it home. The lead now 20 in favor of Notre Dame. Well, these points are important for individual statistics anyway, so. Shot misses, the ball is live, and the rebound's picked up by Notre Dame. Here comes the Fighting Irish, Gaj Marak, playing both sides of the floor so effectively tonight. Just swings it across. 18 on the clock. Notre Dame trying to get that last shot. Here's Fabiano. Excuse me, Brannigan. Balls up top with Gajmarak. Gajmarak to Brannigan. Three on the clock. The shot's up. It's short. And that will do it as the referee says no basket. The referee, Joe Zarota. He's <laughs> actually the principal at, I believe, Holy Cross. Oh, you know what? No, he's at Blessed Trinity now in Grimsby. He used to be the principal at Holy Cross, but he's now the principal at Blessed Trinity in Grimsby, calling no basket there. So the shot went up, but it's no good. However, the score, 50 to 30 in favor of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, with only one quarter to play in this 2015 Girls Tribune basketball tournament. So a lot of people make this tournament possible. 12th year for the Welland Girls Tribune tournament. A lot of sponsors that fill out the booklet, the program booklet that goes a long way in fundraising to help out with these $500 scholarships that they give out. And if you weren't with us earlier, they gave out 10 $500 scholarships to girls who have graduated from this tournament and are now either at college or university. Have to thank all the committee members, of course, and all the fans who support girls basketball in local high schools here in the Niagara region and make it a special evening for everyone. Spencer Tangway alongside Steve Camus to call the final quarter of this 12th annual tournament here at Eastdale Secondary. Here comes St. Paul. Bearing has it. Ball swings up top. It's Dempsey with it. Dempsey, of course, still in the running for some more awards later on tonight that we'll get to after the game. It'll be a throw in for St. Paul with 7.30 to go in the fourth. They look for the shot, it's not there, so they go to the middle. One dribble, up for it, the block. Rebounds good, and the basket's credited to number 15, Megan McLeod. 
before you blink, Notre Dame's already back down the floor, trying to get some more points. Notre Dame swings it to Gajmarak, who runs the top of this unit. Back over now, it's 21, Miranda Smith. Smith, looking for options, setting a seal is Morningstar. Morningstar 44 to Gajmarak, the shot off the far rim. But a push foul is called, and Notre Dame will go to the line. This is Gajmarak at the line. And what a game she has had from everywhere on the floor, from playing defense, from these three throws, two three-pointers. Gajmarak will get three because that shot was from behind the arc. And makes it look like it's easy. So now the lead is 21. St. Paul into the middle, low key, off the glass, and that's textbook basketball. 6.35 to go. Notre Dame doing a fantastic job all evening of controlling the offense and keeping the ball in this half as there's a long shot and it's good. Number 21 for a three, that's Miranda Smith. And they're going to call a full timeout with 6.22 to go. So Spencer, you and I haven't seen every game that's been played in this tournament, but just watching this game here, who do you think's the tournament MVP? Well, if I'm going to just watch this game as we see that three, I'm thinking of all the threes tonight. I have to go to Notre Dame's number 23, Maddie Gajmarak, of how well she controls this Notre Dame team all aspects of her game has been spot on tonight. From the free throws, as I mentioned, to the three-pointers, to defense. Gajmarak has to be my MVP so far. And I know the committee hates this because they have to choose. But I agree with you, Spencer. So the two of us up here watching the game, we're both agreeing on the same player. And if the committee chooses a different player, they hate it when we pick a player because... <laughs> Then they say, hey, the guys on TV thought <laughs> yeah. she should have got it. Makes their job a lot easier if they <laughs> listen to us sometimes. But <laughs> no, I would not want to be in their shoes because many players, not just from Notre Dame, but all teams so far in this tournament have been absolutely playing excellent basketball. Well, and in saying that, just like I said, you and I are just going by this game alone. Right. Where the committee has watched every single game that's been played. And we can even go to Dennis's Morris game, yes, or Dennis Morris game that just happened. And when, when we saw Erin Kenny, what a fantastic tournament she's had. She was the Redmond for them today. And I'm going to have to say Gajmarak has been the heart and soul of this Notre Dame team with six minutes to go, 56-34. The lead in favor of Gajmarak and the Irish. But back come the St. Paul Patriots. Up the rebound. And it's good, putting home the rebound with St. Paul's number 32, Laura Di Domenico. Gajmarak to the far side. Down low to the corner to Morningstar. Morningstar looking for room, an excellent pass. And an easy two points for number 12, Lauren Fresca. St. Paul ball, full court pressure. And even with this big lead, you see Notre Dame still using that full court pressure, trying to get St. Paul to fall right into their pressure. Well, that game yesterday that St. Paul played against Vanier, that was a tough game, 45-41 win. It took everything they had to come out the victor on that game. So five minutes and change to go here in the final quarter of the 12th annual Tribune Basketball Tournament for the ladies. It's Notre Dame well in the lead here. Ball swings down low to the corner. Notre Dame really moving the ball nicely, trying to find that perfect lane as a foul is coming on the floor before the shot. And I believe it'll be Frasca who will go to the line as that might be the fifth foul against St. Paul, so Frasca heads for two.
And Frasca goes one for two. And substitutions will be coming in. Barbatano using more of his bench now. Some of these players, the starters especially, Gosh marak has been playing almost the entire game. Frasca's been playing almost the entire game. So even though Notre Dame is using their bench, they've been uh, consistent with about two or three of their players that have played almost the entire game. Notre Dame now settling down on offense. You hear the crowd in the background screaming Irish. Four minutes and 15 seconds to go. They look to the middle. That one just too low and the key. Notre Dame, that's Gajmarak pulling out. Sends it across to Frasca. Frasca going one on one. Back to Gajmarak. That's her shooting lane. Doesn't want it. To the middle. Off the glass. Doesn't work. St. Paul with the rebound. Back up the floor come the Patriots. The foul coming, but the shot from number 33. That's Sarah Baring will not work. And Baring goes for two. I was saying earlier, Sarah Baring was at the foul line. Aggressive player. But because they're down by so much, it's taken away from her game. So she's let up a little bit. So she's not as aggressive as she normally is just because of the score. So the shot is no good. But Baring, what a tournament she's had as well. She's one of the best players on the St. Paul team this year as that shot is nothing but mesh. Here comes Notre Dame back up the floor. And as I take a look behind the net, I see Bern Frank, like you mentioned on the baseline, taking great quality shots that'll be seen in the Tribune tomorrow morning, as well as Monday, of course, online. And Notre Dame will just call a full timeout and regroup, and I have a feeling we might see the more bench players, as you mentioned, come in and finish this game for Notre Dame. The Tribune Tournament Committee would like to express a sincere thanks to the following for their generous contributions. They are Apri Brown Jewelers, Pam Swick Janjak, Ontario Secondary Schools Teachers Federation, the Welland Tribune, Ron Harpwood Trophies, Thurston Machine Company Limited, Kojiko Cable, Welland Minor Basketball, Port Colburn Youth Basketball, Brock University, Sandy Forehand, Ron McPherson, Pat Lang, Jackie Turner, Peter Vandenberg in the Students and Niagara College Broadcasting Department, Niagara College, and thank you to the host sites. There's seven of them, Eastdale, Centennial, E.L. Crosley, Jean Vanier, Niagara College, Notre Dame, and Port Colburn High School. And what a tournament it has been as we come close to crowning a champion. This is the ninth time Notre Dame has been to this championship game. They've won four times, and three times was against Lakeshore, once against these very same St. Paul Patriots, as this is the third time they've met. St. Paul and Notre Dame played back in 2008 and 2009, and this is the third time where they meet here in 2015. Irish up by 20, 59-39, your score. The three point, no good, it's up and it's off the rim and out of bounds, so it'll be St. Paul ball as it just rolls out of play. Subs coming in for both teams now as St. Paul will see Valerie Pegnata return to the game. It's funny how Notre Dame went on hiatus for three years, nine consecutive years as you were saying Spencer, then the last three years that never made this championship game, so they finally returned. Well, I, actually, as we take a look at the past champion, Centennial has been great. They won the last two, but this time they're nowhere to be found in either the consolation or the championship game, so it's nice to see the variety of teams that we can get here in the Niagara region. And, and in the last three years that Notre Dame hasn't been in the championship, it's been the same two teams. It's been Centennial and St. Francis. So here is Notre Dame. That's Frasca with it, number 12. Looks down low, she finds number 21. Smith, Smith goes to the hoop, she can't get it up. Ball is picked up and dished off to number 12, Frasca. 
Frasca controls and dribbling, trying to kill a little bit of time. 2.08 to go on the game clock. Irish looking to just finish off and be the champions. Good move. Jump back shot, and that's going to find the hole. Frasca with a nice jumper. Notre Dame now in the 60s. And when we said 40 was a good number and a good night for teams, it could be 63. And it's 63. Minute and a half of basketball still to play. 63-39 your score. Spencer Tangway and Steve Camus have been here all night calling tonight's games for you. Notre Dame in control. Quick shot. Doesn't work for St. Paul. And the Irish are going to take, I believe, a timeout. I'm not sure what that was because the referee and the officials blew their whistle. As Notre Dame just makes a quick substitution. As this was the chance that made it 63-39 on that excellent steal. Back come the other way now. It's Notre Dame with the ball. Notre Dame just dribbling around the horn up top as we approach last minute to play in the championship. Poked away and it's a race for it. That ball is won by Notre Dame and a foul coming. So Notre Dame will get the ball back. And if you're watching this game on Saturday, October 24th, and didn't catch the game in its, in its entirety and you possibly want to record it, you can catch it again the following day, tomorrow, Sunday, October 25th at 9 p.m. on TV Kojiko Channel 10 and Channel 700 in HD. So it will air again Sunday, October 25th at 9 p.m. Notre Dame with a quick jumper late in this contest. Finds number 24, and it's good. 24, that's Ali Consilji. So Consigliai puts it in, and all of a sudden it's 65-39. Notre Dame now, fans on their feet, bringing home the championship as they will become tournament champions in their ninth appearance here. Foul called against the Irish, and number 24 for St. Paul, that's Valerie Pegnata, will get two shots. And it must be fun for Notre Dame knowing that they're up, they have the crowd on their backs, and it's an atmosphere here. It is absolutely loud, it's crazy, and it's fun to be a part of, and to play in it must be something special. Six on the clock, they'll run it up the floor, and that will do it. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish are tournament champions and will claim gold here at the 12th Annual Girls Tribune Basketball Tournament. Well, let's see if this is the beginning of another run. They did it nine years in a row, appeared in the championship game. We're away for three years, and now they're back again this year. St. Paul needs to be proud. Two tournaments, back-to-back, -back, championship finalists. It's tough not winning the big game at the end, but to get there two weekends in a row is not an easy task. And not only that, like you said, to be able to play here on TV Kojiko for you at home and for all the fans here in attendance, what a show they put on. And nothing but class for both these two teams, St. Paul and Notre Dame. So still to come, we have, of course, more awards presented by tournament committee members. And we'll get to lots more action on tonight's broadcast. But as we said earlier, my pick and your pick for tournament MVP was Maddie Gajmarak, and we'll find out if that stays true as we'll send it down to the floor for tournament medallion presentations.
So St. Paul will now claim their finalist trophies as they call upon captains. What was great to see is when McLeod received her player of the game award as that coach Kristen McLeod came over with a big smile and congratulated herself. Well, we noted at halftime how disappointed McLeod, uh, McDonald was and how low St. Paul seemed. But now it's nothing but smiles as I think they realize what a game it is to be a part of and to make it this far. Jenna Greco. Jenna Greco there shaking hands with the Notre Dame team, number five. Feisty little player, good shooter. And Sarah Baring, she had a great game. But as they mentioned when they received their plaques and medallions that this team has is definitely not done yet and they might be back here next year. And what a team. Head coach Krista McDonald has, alongside assistant coach Jason Long, with the St. Paul Patriots. I mentioned nothing but class and a lot of talent coming from St. Paul and Niagara Falls. Notre Dame, of course, will receive their gold medallions and team plaques after St. Paul. And then we'll get to some tournament MVP and tournament All-Star awards. So once again, your 2015 finalists are the St. Paul Patriots from Niagara Falls. And now the tournament champions, Notre Dame, who had an excellent tournament all this week. Two ladies there giving out the banners of the conveners of the tournament, Rita Van Trusca Root and Sandy Forehand. Rita is heavily involved in well and minor basketball. Sandy is a referee for the, Nash of the Niagara District Referees. And what a tournament these Notre Dame fighting lady, Notre Dame Irish have had. As we mentioned earlier, they really haven't had a real close game and competition, but they've shown no give up all tournament. And tonight, they just kept playing their game and kept playing hard through the entire 32 minutes. Kayla Bavakwa named the player of the game for Notre Dame as well. Had a great game tonight on the offensive side of the ball. And now the tournament MVP and All-Stars are next. And our most sportsmanlike team this year. 
as they announce E.L. Crosley as the most sportsmanlike team. And they had an excellent game as well against DM earlier in the consolation game. And the team's attitude, Crosley, is a reflection of their coach, Doug Aitchison. present the most sportsmanlike player. It went to Dennis Morris, is number 20, Sabrina Sestilli. But two Redmen will come over to claim the prize for her. And DM, as we mentioned, a real dominant effort in that consolation game. And played excellent ball throughout the week. Kendra Leger is this year's most offensive player. And it's hard to pick out a best defensive player for Notre Dame today when all the stars were shining on offense. But what an effort from Notre Dame throughout this entire tournament. Top to bottom of their roster. All shining stars and they all played excellent Tribune tournaments. And that goes to show you why it's so important that they have a large committee here watching all the games because just like you say, Spencer, there wasn't a heck of a lot of defense in today's game, but in games earlier in the tournament, they, they could establish defense. course still to come into the new year and later on in a couple months is the boys tournament and that'll be hosted by of course all these schools again and a lot of these same committee members will regroup and get back on it is now they're naming tournament all-stars and there's Aaron Kenny who just had a rough nosebleed to start her game, but then really turned it into overdrive for Dennis Morris. And now Madison Bell, also from Dennis Morris, comes up. Dempsey, of course, number 22 for St. Paul, also receiving honorable mentions. And it's so nice to see how many players are winning awards and being recognized for their great efforts throughout this week and involvement in the community and leadership and academics. This is truly an honor to be a part of and not only to watch, but to see how much this tournament is giving back to the community, like you said, countless times. Great thunderous applause for Lauren Frasca, number 12, and Notre Dame as everyone is staying in their seats to support these great student athletes across both the public and Catholic board here in the Niagara region. And now it's the most valuable player that will be recognized. Of the 
And there it is. We noted Ma Matty Gajmarak, 23. What a fantastic little player she is, and so much potential coming from 23 in gold and green. as they thank all the sponsors and the countless volunteers who made this tournament possible, it's nice to look back on this facility once again before we wrap up on how many people showed up and came and supported this basketball game in such a unique facility that if you haven't been here, you have to get down to Eastdale Secondary to check out one of the coolest gyms in all of probably Ontario for high school basketball. I agree with you, Spencer. I hadn't been in this gym until about six, seven years ago. And then I, I was watching a basketball game, and I just loved it. Just loved it. You've got lower bleachers, you've got higher bleachers, and it's just, it's just great to watch an event here. So keep in mind, if you're just tuning in right now, um, you're possibly watching this on Saturday, October 24th. If you are and you missed it and you want to record it, you can catch it tomorrow, the following day, Sunday, October 25th at 9 p.m. on Kojiko Channel 10 or in HD on Channel 700. There's two games tonight. First game, Dennis Morris defeated E.L. Crosley in the consolation game, and in our championship game, Notre Dame over St. Paul. But what an exciting night of basketball. From the moment I stepped in this gym, I knew something special was going to happen. All the fans piling in as they thank all the volunteers and committee members once again for a successful 12th annual Well and Girls Tribune Basketball Tournament as they thank all the fans, and we thank you for tuning in. What an exciting night of basketball. So I just want to thank Bern Frank from the Welland Tribune, all the sponsors and all the committee members for making another successful Welland Girls Tribune basketball tournament. Well, on behalf of myself and Steve Camus, what a night it's been. And on behalf of the entire broadcasting crew here from Niagara College, we say thank you and have a great night. And we look forward to